My speakers are 4 ohms, but my amp is 8 ohms. Can I use this combination? And what is ohms for heaven's sake? Can I use 2 speakers per channel and why do they put ohms in it anyway? Well, time to shine some light on those elusive ohms. In this video I will try to explain the concept of loudspeaker impedance to people that do not have a degree in electronics. To do that I will cut corners and simplify things. So to those that have a degree in electronics this is not for you. Ok, now we are amongst normal people, let's look at the topic at hand. Most speakers have motors that use electromagnetic force to move the cones. There is a coil that is attached to the cone and mounted inside a magnet structure. If you apply a voltage by connecting for instance a 9 volt battery, a current starts to flow through the coil which generates a second magnetic field. Depending on the polarity this makes the cone move inwards or outwards. When the voltage is disconnected the cone returns to the middle position. Now it is time for a very important law of physics and I quote Albert Einstein. Energy cannot be created or destroyed, it can only change from one form to the other. Now the coil in the speaker motor works in such a way that it resists the current flow to a certain degree. This causes the magnetic field and heat. The magnetic field is what we want, the heat is something we don't want but we have to live with. The battery we connected produces a direct current, the current flows only in one direction and the degree of resistance is called electrical resistance. It is expressed in ohm. Engineers use the omega sign for ohm. But Sound is caused by a variation in air pressure and if a loudspeaker wants to produce sound it needs to cause variations in air pressure by moving back and forth. So the current through the voice call needs to go back and forth too. Technicians call this alternating current since the current alternates. It changes from one direction to the other so to make the air move and cause differences in air pressure. Just as instruments do. It's as simple as that. Unfortunately the resistance of the coil is not the same at every speed of change. The resistance might be lower at fast movements and higher at slow speeds or vice versa. High speeds produce tones we hear as high pitch and low speeds produce tones that are low pitched. Ok, let me tell you another engineer's secret. The speed of change is called frequency and is expressed in vibrations per second. Or hertz. Low tones give low hertz figures and high tones high figures. The lowest tone we can hear is 20 hertz, the highest 20,000 hertz when we are young, say around 15,000 hertz halfway our life and perhaps as low as 10,000 hertz when rather old. Unless we turn deaf, but that's another story. Now why does the resistance change? when the frequency changes. Simply put it has to do with the slowness of things, including electrons. That is perhaps best explained using the behavior of a car. If your car is stationary and you put your foot on the accelerator, the engine starts applying force to the wheels and the car will start moving. But it will take some time before it reaches the speed you want. At a crossing you will apply the brakes but again it will take some time before the car stops. The mass of the car impedes acceleration and deceleration. All kinds of properties of loudspeaker parts impede the current in a similar way, meaning that when the amp applies a voltage to the loudspeaker it will take some time before a current starts flowing that in turn starts a secondary magnetic field that causes the cone to move. The reverse applies too. If the voltage becomes zero the cone doesn't stop right away. The kinetic energy in the cone makes it move somewhat longer. Electronically similar behavior is present that impedes the flow of electrons. The degree in which the loudspeaker impedes the current is aptly called impedance and again expressed in ohm. 
Why do they bother us with impedance? Can't they just take care of it? Well no, loudspeaker technique might be one of the most complex techniques in your stereo since it involves electronics, mechanics and acoustics. This means that all kinds of compromises have to be made, some of them involving the impedance. The key for you is that the lower the impedance, the higher the current. And the higher the current, the more heat is generated in the amp. That is why amplifier manufacturers specify the minimum load, the lowest impedance. If the amp is able to work with 8 ohm speakers without getting too hot, the brochure, the manual and the rear of the amp will state for use with 8 ohm speakers. Will the amp break down as soon as you connect a 4 ohm speaker? No, and if you don't play too loud, the amp will keep working. Under normal domestic conditions the amp only has to provide little power, often around a single watt. But be aware, if you play at a higher level the amp might overheat. Many modern amps will simply shut down and work again when cooled down, but some amps that lack such protection circuit might simply fry their power transistors or equal. If your amp is specified to work with 4 ohm speakers, as most modern amps are nowadays, you can of course use 4 ohm speakers, but also 8 ohm speakers, for the higher impedance will lead to lower current and thus lower power. That is why amps have a lower power rating in 8 ohm speakers than in 4 ohm speakers. Well, that's clear then. Use only 8 ohm speakers when your amp is specified for 8 ohm speakers. If your amp is specified for 4 ohm, you can use 4 and 8 ohm speakers, or more correctly, any speaker with an impedance of 4 ohm or higher. Nowadays manufacturers often specify a range, 4 to 8 ohms for instance. It is good practice to stick to that. Is it all clear now? Ok, let's make it a bit more complicated. There are no 4 ohm or 8 ohm speakers. Yes, the specs are absolutely legal, at least in most cases, for the standard is to measure the impedance at 1 kHz and if a lower impedance occurs at another frequency it should not deviate more than 8% or the spec should be adjusted. All fair and square. But let's have a look at the real world measurements and let's start by measuring an 8 ohm power resistor like I have here. I use this for measuring amps and it does nothing more than convert power into heat, hence the cooling profiles. I use my automated measuring beast, the audio precision system to cascade and it is set up to apply a range of frequencies at a given voltage and measure the voltage drop over the loudspeaker terminals and the voltage drop over the sensing resistor. From these two measurements the computer calculates the impedance. You can easily forget this if you don't get it, or google loudspeaker impedance measurement if you want to know more. When you listen to this video over headphones or large stereo, you can hear the measurement tone start at 20 Hz. From there it goes up to 30 kHz and 200 steps and after each measurement the next frequency is generated, measured and plotted. Whatever you do, don't increase the volume. Measurement tones can cause damage when played too loud. Ok, here we go. As you can see the green line is nicely at 8 ohms, as indicated on the left scale. Ignore the amps behind the values. Now it is time for a normal loudspeaker. This speaker is specified at 8 ohms. It takes the audio position relatively long to do the measurements below 100 Hz. This is because the impedance is not too stable at low frequencies. The audio precision does several measurements and is only satisfied when the outcome seems reliable. Again, the green line is the impedance, the other line I'll explain later. Here we go.
As you can see the measurement at 20 Hz starts at 5.8 ohms to go to 15.5 ohms at 48 kHz. Then goes down again to 6 ohms at 70 Hz and even 22 ohms at approximately 120 Hz. It even goes to 27 ohms at 2.5 kHz. As you see this 8 ohm speaker is anything but an 8 ohm speaker. And most speakers are like this, some are even worse. Then there is the light blue line that indicates how much current will lead or lag the voltage. Remember the car where you apply the horsepower before the car reaches the desired speed. Here the horsepower is ahead of the speed and when braking the speed is ahead of the horsepower. The light blue line indicates the comparable phenomenon for speakers. The scale is on the right and in degrees. At 20 Hz the phase angle is minus 20 degrees, meaning the current is slightly ahead of the voltage. At 55 Hz the phase angle is plus 20 degrees, so here the voltage is ahead of the current, while at about 150 Hz it is about plus 35 degrees, and so on. It might be clear that the best efficiency is achieved at zero phase angle. If the phase is negative at a frequency where the impedance is very low, it causes big currents provided the amp can deliver. If not, the amplifier is no longer in control and that leads to poor performance or worse. There is much more to say about loudspeaker impedances, but I won't. The interaction between the amp and the loudspeaker of course is very important. If the loudspeakers behave nasty, you better find an amp that can deliver shiploads of current. But how do you know what current an amplifier can deliver? Even professionals only know for sure if a combination of amplifier and speakers will perform when they have tried. The information in this video is good to know for it gives more insight making you less prone to false claims made by sellers or resellers. But Unless you know for sure a combination of an amp and a speaker works fine, like from a friend who owns that combination, always try to listen to the set using your own music. For now I have decided not to review speakers, with the exception of those that offer wireless streaming at minimally my set up on quality. And I am told some are in the pipeline. So subscribe to this channel or follow me on Twitter, Facebook or Google+. See the show notes for the links. If you like this video please consider supporting the channel through Patreon or PayPal. Just a dollar or more a month is appreciated. The links are in the show notes, just as the links to the descriptions of my three setups. Help me to help m even more people with their stereos by telling your friends on the web about this channel. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. Whatever you do. Enjoy the music.